Hey everyone, Brad from DevOps Journey here, and today we're going to talk about SSH key pairs and how you can generate them and copy them to other machines, including a Windows machine. So let's go ahead and hop right in. I'm on my Raspberry Pi, but this is applicable to any Linux machine. So the first thing you want to do is underneath the home directory, there is a folder named .ssh. So I'm going to go into that folder right now, and I'm going to have a look at the files there. And you can see there's four files. The ones that we're interested in for this video is id underscore rsa, id underscore rsa dot pub, and authorize keys. The id underscore rsa is your private key. This one's your public key. And this is a list of public keys that this machine will authorize. Meaning, if my other machine has a private key, and the public key to that private key is within this authorized keys file, then this machine will grant access to it. With that being said, let's get to it. There's two really important commands that I want to show off here. So the first one's going to be ssh-keygen. And basically what this does is generate the private and public ssh key. I'm just going to hit enter for that prompt and press yes to overwrite it. And I'm going to skip putting in a passphrase because I don't want to have to enter in any passwords when I'm using this key pair. So you can see that it shows some random key art. And if I do an ls-l, I can see that these two files were modified. So if we look at the public, we can see that this is now the public key. And if we look at id underscore rsa, this is the private key. So this is the important one that we need to copy over to our other hosts. The last thing that we need to do is modify this authorize keys file. If we have a look at it, you can see that there's two public keys in there. Basically, these are the keys that this machine will authorize. I'm going to actually delete this file. And we can see it's gone. And now I'm going to regenerate it by doing an ssh copy dash id. And I'm going to specify my ssh key file here. And I'm going to put localhost to copy this to the authorized key file locally. And it wants my password. So we'll put that in. And now if we do an LSL, we can see authorized keys was generated. If we look at it, we see a public key here. And if we match that to this one, we can see that it's the exact same public key. Now, if you wanted to do the same to another host, you would basically run this same command, but instead of putting localhost, you would put in the remote host IP address or host name. And this would basically push out the public key to the host as an authorized key so that host could be managed by this private SSH key. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I want this private key on my Windows box so I can SSH into my Linux machine without putting in a password. So I can do this a couple of ways. I can cat this out and get it into my clipboard but I'm actually just going to copy this to a network share that I have and uh, and then copy the file over. All right, so I actually copied the private key as well as the public key to my share. And now I'm ready to grab it on my Windows hosts and put it into the correct location. So on my Windows hosts, I can see the private key and public key. And I'm just going to copy this. And then I'm going to put it into this location right here. And this is the directory path. It's C drive users, your username, slash dot SSH. I've copied over the public key as well as the private key. So now when I open up a new SSH session, it should not prompt me for the password. It's going to use this key by default. Now I'll go ahead and connect. And it connected successfully. Now if you're using something like PuTTY, you're going to have to choose to use a key pair. I will show you what that looks like in my version of PuTTY. I'm actually using SolarWinds PuTTY, so it probably looks a little different than yours, but the gist of it should be the same. Uh, let me start the new session here. And if I go create new session, 
you can see that it asks me for a bunch of details. So I put in the host name here. It's asking me for the private key. So this is where I'd go and browse for the private key if I needed to add it manually. Um, if you're using Windows Terminal like I was here, then it just knows to look for that file in that location and everything just works perfectly. So I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them below and I will try to get back to you. And if you just want to chat with people in the DevOps slash Linux community, come to our Discord channel and uh, just feel free to chat with us. There's tons of people in the community and uh, we're all interested in learning together. So I hope to see you there. And uh, yeah, I'd just like to thank you all for watching and I hope to see you all in the next video.